Good morning everyone. The Lord be with you. Friends, welcome to St. Andrews. If this is your first time coming to St. Andrews, please don't be disappointed. This is not our regular service like this. This is special. Uh, today is so special. We have a Christmas, uh, we have a service of lessons and carols, and you will see dynamic, a, a dynamic duo uh, between handbell choirs and also our St. Andrews choirs. So we will have lots of singings and uh, lessons today. I hope you enjoy uh, and be blessed. So uh, today's service will flow, just flow like a river. So follow um, um, the sequence and enjoy and yeah, enjoy the flow to, for today. Any other announcements for today? Aha. Uh -huh. So, uh, we will need help to put the communion table over there back to its original place. So, if you uh, can stay for a while, those of you have muscles and strong back, uh, we need your help. That's all. And for the processional hymn, come thou low expected, long expected Jesus. Verses 1 and 2. Please stand if you are able. Friends, join me for the responsive call to worship. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord and bless God's name. Declare God's glory among the nations, God's marvelous works among all the people. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let 
Let the whole creation sing for joy at the presence of God who is coming. Let us pray. Gracious God, in this advent of expectations, draw us together in unity, that our praise and worship might echo in these walls and also through our lives. In this advent of expectations, also draw us together in mission, that the hope within might be so strong, might be the song we sing and the melody of our lives. In this advent of expectations, Draw us together also in service, that the path we follow might lead us from a stable to a glimpse of eternity. In Jesus' name, Amen. I invite you to stand if you are able. Our next hymn, hymn number 1661 in Royal David's City. First lesson for today comes from Genesis chapter 3, verse 8 to 15 and 17 to 19. This is the word of the Lord. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called Adam and said to him, Where are you? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked. So I hid myself. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? Then the man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I ate. 
And the Lord God said to the woman, What is, what is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and so I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle, and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go, and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. Then to Adam he said, Because you have heeded to the voice of your wife, and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth to you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread, till you return to the ground. For out of it you are taken, for dust you are, and to dust you shall return. Our second lesson comes from Genesis chapter 22, 15 to 18. This is the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Then the angel of the Lord called Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son. Blessing I will bless you and multi multiplying 
I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore. And your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. In your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. For unto us a child is born, unto us a child, a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting, Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with ju judgment and justice. From that time forward, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this.
There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his root. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. His delight is in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge by the sight of his eyes nor decide by the hearing of his ears, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. prophet's call and the apostle writes that peace comes from God. For a child has been born for us and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, and there shall be endless peace. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The world, our relationships, and our lives <clears throat> are all too often torn by conflict and injustice. Advent calls us to pray and work for peace, shalom, and the world God loves and in which God came, uh, Christ came. But God's shalom is not simply the absence of conflict. Shalom is the peace that comes when we live life in the balance, loving God and one another. Holy are you, source of all new life among us. Jesus Christ comes as the Prince of Peace. We join with all creation and lift our hearts in joyful praise. We this candle to
Now, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also, that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Then Mary said, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And then the angel departed from her.
And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was also with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. So it was, when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger.
Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are you not the least among the rulers of Judah? For out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child, and when you have found him, bring back word to me, that I may come and worship him also. When they heard the king, they departed, and behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy, and when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, 
and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Friends, this Sunday we sell, in Advent, we celebrate God's gift of peace. When we look around the world, we see so many places where peace is missing, perhaps in the neighborhoods or also in nations. But because we know the gift of God's peace, we can trust that our gifts will help restore true peace to the souls and situations by the power of the Spirit. Let's prepare our hearts for the offering.
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was like the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light, that all through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. And the world became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth.
uh, friends, uh, join me for the prayers of the people. Let us pray. God in whom we live, we move, and we have our being. As we gather our thoughts in prayer, we are aware of so many challenges in our own lives, in the lives of those we care about, and also in the world around us. We wonder how you will reveal yourself in response to so many different needs. We trust your heart is moved by the pain and potential in each pre precious life, for you never give up on situations which we find overwhelming. We pray for those who are in the headlines this week, for situations that concerns us deeply, and for all who cry out to you in the face of overwhelming odds. Draw near to them, give them courage and wisdom. We pray for those who are suffering in quiet corners of our community, remembering those who are ill, those who are bereaved, those who struggle with poverty or unemployment, and all who face barriers through discrimination or disability. Draw near to them, O Lord, with compassion and support. We pray for those who are waiting for something significant, for a birth or a death, for diagnosis or treatment, for important news or a new opportunity. Draw near to them, O Lord. Give them peace and faithfulness. We pray for those who struggle with their faith, and those who have given up on you because of actions taken in your name that betrayed your love. Draw them back to you in this season, in this season of wonder and love. And we pray for our church and also for each other. May our life together offer the healing peace of Christ in our community and most importantly in our homes. Open our hearts to new possibilities for ministry as we pray together the words Christ taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our closing hymn, hymn number 153, Joy to the World, I would like to invite you to stand if you are able. receive these blessings go in peace today ready to bear fruit worthy of your commitment to Jesus Christ and his kingdom of justice and peace and may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace 
in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's give them a round of applause, our handbell choirs and St. Andrew's choir. Friends, please join us uh, for the fellowship and for uh, coffee and cookies together in the gym. If you don't have any plan, we would like to see you in the gym uh, for fellowship together. God bless.